nationally syndicated radio talk show host. I call him the great one, Mark Levin. Mark, your reaction to this deal? My reaction is that Barack Obama has now planted the seeds of World War III. And one day, World War III is going to break out right here because of his actions today to arm up the Iranian regime, this terrorist regime in Tehran. You know, Obama likes to say that Reagan and Kennedy negotiated with the Soviets. The Soviets had nukes. Iran does not have nukes. But thanks to him and Kerry and the other ideologues and lightweights that surround him, they're going to get nukes. And this is where World War III, in my view, is going to start. And he has sealed the fate. The, the, the adults who are listening to this program, your children and grandchildren, he has made the world so much more dangerous as a result of what he's done. These inspections are phony. There are no real sanctions. The Iranians can't be trusted. They have demonstrated that time and time again, no less than the United Nations has told us. The Russians and the Chinese are thrilled by this because we're going to be bogged down for decades. This is a complete disaster. Now, let me, let me tell you what the national, the worldwide threat assessment of the United States intelligence community under this president said in 2013. Tehran has made technical progress in a number of areas, including uranium enrichment, nuclear reactors, and ballistic missiles, from which it could draw if it decided to build missile deliverable nuclear weapons. Those ICBMs, do you know, Sean, they weren't even on the table? They didn't even discuss them? They said, these technical advances strengthen our assessment that Iran has scientific, technical, and industrial capacity to eventually produce nuclear weapons. Now, we were told a few years ago, uh, really, they needed nuclear power to heat their homes in the middle of the desert. Now, we know that's phony. This whole thing is phony. What's happened now is Obama has surrendered there. He surrendered in Cuba. He surrendered with the Russians. He surrendered in the South China Sea. Meanwhile, he's howling out the United States military. This is a complete and utter disaster, and America is in incredible danger as a result of this deal. Well, so is Israel, as the Prime Minister of Israel mentioned earlier. Let me, let me talk about what Republicans might be able to do, because they, were show, they showed weakness in this deal as well, because they had negotiated away, Mark, their constitutional authority, and, and they agreed to this 30-day, 60-day, and the pres president saying that this is not a treaty. What is your reaction to how they have handled it and what options they may have available to them at this point? Well, we're going to have a conga line of Senate Republicans and House Republicans uh, decrying this deal when they knew this deal was going to be a disaster from the leaks from the Iranians, of anybody. And what they did is they surrendered the treaty power under the Constitution, Article 2, Section 2, Clause 2, to Obama. So now, rather than needing two-thirds of the senators present to ratify a treaty, all Obama needs is one-third of the senators. Because he said in his speech today, he's going to veto any changes that may come, any challenges that may come. The reason the treaty provision is in the Constitution, Alexander Hamilton made it clear, it cannot be left to one man or one administration to engage the nation in such uh, historic and important and broad-based global agreements without more than one man and one administration opining on it. Obama is disgusted by our system of government. He wants nothing to do with Congress. And Bob Corker and Lindsey Graham and all the rest of them surrendered this power to Obama. They knew better. The only Churchill who voted against this, the only United States senator who stood up and voted no, won was Tom Cotton. That was it. Let me ask you this last question, because I think this is important. So Republicans caved. They wouldn't use their constitutional authority and the power of the purse as it relates to repealing and replacing Obamacare. They wouldn't use the power of the purse when it came to the president's illegal, unconstitutional executive action on immigration. They gave up their power as, as it relates to treaties, a constitutional authority they have. So what good are they at this point? They seem timid, weak, no spine, no backbone, no principles. If they won't stand up on these issues, what are they going to stand up for? They're not going to stand up for anything. Need a new Republican Party. Reagan said it in the 70s. The same people who fought Reagan and didn't want him to be president are the same people we're dealing with right now. They're busy attacking conservatives. They're busy attacking their base. I've never seen such disgraceful conduct. The Republican Party, as it sits today, has no purpose. It doesn't even stop Obama. Do you know Obama, in o over six and a half years, has had to veto only four bills? That's a historic low. Do you know why, Sean? Because whatever bills the Republicans send to Obama, he likes them. He signs them. They're funding every bit 
of Obamacare. Yeah. They're funding every bit of amnesty. They are raising the debt ceiling. They are working behind the scenes with Obama and he with them. All and right. still it's not enough. By the, way, the Republican Party needs new leadership, conservative leadership, or this is going to continue. I agree. Uh, I see your new book by the, uh, over your shoulder there, and I got my first copy. It's coming out in August, Plunder and Deceit. Great one, Mark Levin. Thank you for being with us. Appreciate it.